here I am. I'm a, I'm a guy. I'm, this is an indie movie. And I'm a guy waiting for a bus right now because it's the beginning and we don't really want you to know who I am yet. <clears throat> we just want you to know that I'm starting a journey to somewhere. And my journey starts here at this bus stop. And you might be thinking, there's far too much exposition in this scene or in this movie. But, hey, it's kind of meta that I'm even telling you this right now. So here I am, just waiting for the bus. And what do you know? It never comes. Oh, actually, it's right here. Sorry about that. All right. Let's get it on the bus. <clears throat> Man, this is bus is taking a whole long time to get to my destination right now. I really wish that uh, I could get off this bus at my stop because I'm ready to go home. I'm tired. I had a long day at work at my job as an accountant, and it it's the year 2023, so accountants don't really wear suits anymore. That's why I'm dressed in a t-shirt. <laughs> oh, great. Here's my stop. Finally, I'm home. Woo. After such a long day of work and waiting for the bus and taking the bus just to get here to my house, which is this apartment, which I'm in right now, <clears throat> for real. And I'm going to do account things that accountants do when they get home from work. Like, I'm going to send an email to my boss telling him to go fuck himself. Here I am, typing an email on my, on my computer, and there's bright lights on my face. There's bright lights flashing on my face, and I'm typing an email to my boss. I'm tired of this job as an accountant. I'm going to go on an adventure. That's the, that's the inciting incident of this movie. I quit my job to go on an adventure. Here we go. Typing it and send. Yo, ever heard of Jerkmate? And it's now you're fun, learning about my character as a person. I'm just, I, I'm addicted to porn. I watch a lot of porn on the internet. Oh uh, no! Now there's a virus on my computer. This could be the my Join the start the of my adventure. Today. I gotta take it to the Apple Store. <clears throat> oh no! It's gonna blow! I gotta get out of here. All right, here I am at the Apple Store. My computer exploded and I have to get it repaired. I hope they can fix a computer that blew up. I have it, I don't, I don't have it on me because I forgot it somewhere. I don't know where I left it. Huh. Well, it's awfully busy in this Apple Store. Perhaps, perhaps I'll come back later after I find my computer, which is in a thousand little pieces which is also the name of this movie, A Thousand Little Pieces. So it's pretty apropos that my computer exploded into A Thousand Little Pieces and I find myself missing it. That's the adventure I'm on. I shall go find my computer. <laughs> Here I am in the mountains looking for my exploded computer. But it's not here. All there is is birds and trees. I'm a tree. And it, well, there's talking trees. Wow. I love being in the mountains. Now I'm starting to learn something as a character. Maybe I don't need technology and I don't need to be part of society. Now all I want is to live here in the mountains in peace. I shall collect wood and food so I can build a home and a sustainable life here in the forest. I shall go find some wood now. <clears throat> Despite, <laughs> Despite being in the forest, I found no wood. Because I decided that it's not my right to cut down all these trees and contribute to deforestation. I should just live off the land. That's why I'm here in this cave. I'm here in this cave because 
it's it's, it's a it's pretty, pretty good natural, natural shelter for me. me. And, and that's, that's the moral of the story, story here, is, is give up give and live in a cave. cave. And now the credits. My name's my name's Eugene, by the way, and we didn't get to that in the movie. And I'm about to be eaten by a bear. But that's in the and that's in the after credit scene. Here I, here I am in the stomach of the bear in the after credit scene. I was eaten, alive and whole. I will be digested soon, but I'm okay with that because I'm Eugene, a former accountant who gave up and lives in a cave now. And that's the official end of the movie. Thanks for coming on today. You know, it's not every day that I get one of my fellow men from the local coffee store to, you know, stop on by the studio. And I just want to say, thanks for being here. Yeah, I don't really shake hands because uh, I got to keep the coffee clean. Respect. Respect, man. Yeah, dude, I really take it seriously. Uh, you know, I've been a barista for about two months now, and if there's one thing I learned, any bacteria that gets onto a coffee bean ruins the flavor. No the aroma. doubt. Yeah. I once, I once got, I accidentally dropped a raisin in a container of Folgers and it ruined the whole thing. Oh, God damn it. Was it okay? No, no, it was, tasted like raisins. Ugh, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a raisin in coffee. I mean, that's not dark roast. If anything, that's hell roast. Sorry, shouldn't have done that again. I gotta work on my listening. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Is this the pose you take when you pray to the beans? Is this kind of like a mantra that you use against them to be more flavorful? Uh, this is an express... Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like I'm praying to the bean gods. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They're Thanks high in the mountain. You gotta pray to them. Right. Gotta give them the respect they deserve. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're supposed to put your fingertips together like this. And... Uh, it's a sign of respect to the beans, as the uh, beans are about the size of your fingertips. Right, right. When you touch them together like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Especially when the coffee's brewing. Like now, that. do you ever find yourself just walking around the house holding beans in your hands? I'm talking five beans in between each fingertip. It's a lot of beans. I try to separate them out, so uh -huh. I'll put, uh, usually I'll do one at a time. Especially when I'm when I'm grinding coffee beans, I like to grind them one at a time right. to get a real fine grind. Right, right, and that really also shows the respect you're giving to each bean because you wouldn't dare like mix it yeah. with other beans, no, right. lesser than that bean. Yeah, right. It's uh, kind of you got to keep them separate. I I do keep them separate. It takes uh, a long time to make my coffee in the morning. Um, I'm usually about four hours late for work every day because sure. of that. Uh, but uh, it gives me a real fine cup of coffee. Um, the trouble is uh, I can only serve one or two customers per shift. Right, right, because you're out of stock before you know it. It just takes me a while because I'm doing one bean at uh -huh, a time. Uh -huh. But I think they get it by the end, uh, by, their, by the end of their four-hour wait. They, uh, they really appreciate having a good cup of coffee. No doubt. I mean, if I was waiting four hours for a cup of coffee, I would be super happy when I got it. If it tasted good, yeah. Yeah. And that's me. Exactly. Tastes good coffee. Right. Mean, what is the name of this process of which you prepare each bean? Because I've heard of, you know, uh, wood fired, I've heard of heat roasted, but what exactly is yours? There's even Snapchill. I mean, 
for a name like yours, you've got to have something specific. Yeah, it's called single grind and fire beans. Sure, sure. Yeah. Single ground fire beans. Single single grind and fire. Single grind and fire. Yeah. That brings us to our first commercial break. Folks, do not forget to grind at your local Planet Fitness. They are there to make you strong. <laughs> They're there to make you mentally fortuitous. They are there to make you, you. How long have you been in the coffee business? Uh, about two months. Two months? Yeah. Uh, I got involved because uh, I got fired from my job on Wall Street. Mm. And uh, I just need something to make ends meet. Um, and unfortunately, I couldn't get uh, another full-time job. So I just settled with uh, Barista. It's and tough out there for stockbrokers. It, it is tough out there for stockbrokers, um, especially for one like me. Uh, I have no drive, and uh, I'm generally just lazy. <laughs> Come on. You? Grinding one bean at a time? No way. <laughs> well, I mostly came up with the, uh, the uh, practice of grinding one bean at a time uh, so that I didn't have to deal with a whole lot of customers every day. Right. Uh, but it just ended up being a really good cup of coffee, and now I, now I just do it uh, out of request for my customers. Yeah, yeah. And how are you doing financially? Do you find that you're able to make all the bills that you're able to pay for? Uh, I, I, the bills uh, were, I, was, I wasn't able to pay them for a long time and the amount of debt I collected was insurmountable. Uh, so I just figured I wouldn't pay it. Um, I make about five cups, uh, five dollars per cup of coffee that's ten dollars a day. Ten dollars a day, and hey. uh, that's enough to get me by. That's enough to get anyone by. Uh, I can get two bean and cheese burritos from Seven Eleven. Nice, nice. At the end of every shift, I, and uh, I that a sustains couple of those me every day. It's oh. almost got you, man. Uh, you can't, you can't deter the quality of them beans. No, I can't. So uh, I'm glad that you saved me. Um, that would have, that would really hurt me in terms of quality. Hey. I've got your back. Yeah, thank you. Of course. <laughs> Folks, now it's not every day we get a bean expert in the studio. That reminds me, if you haven't liked and subscribed to my studio time yet, please do. Anyway, back to you. Now, am I right in saying that you did an exposition to the Guatemalan mountains? Uh, I did an expedition to the Guatemalan mountains. Um... Tell me more. Well, uh, I took a flight, and uh, I, it was over to the Guatemala airport, which is at the base of the mountains. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Great location, if you ask me. I met a Sherpa named Dave, and he uh, gave me a walking stick and a backpack that had a tent in it. Uh-huh. Uh, I had plenty of bean and cheese burritos from 7-Eleven to get me through the week. Huh, no and doubt. He, uh, he took me to the top where the coffee beans were, and uh, I managed to collect a, a handful, and then I took them back with me home. So that is why you're preparing them the way you are, because you, I mean, it's expensive to go to the Guatemala mountains. Yeah, it is expensive. Um, I, I usually bring back, and it's, it's, well, it's, it's usually a couple thousand dollars to get there, um, and I'll bring back just enough beans to make uh, one cup of coffee, and uh, that seems to make the trip worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, we all got to get our jet fuel, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't actually collect the jet fuel. I think the airline does that, but... Uh, <laughs> My I... man, jet fuel is another name for jet black coffee. <laughs> I thought someone like you would understand the biz, but clearly that one flew over your head. I don't really get references very well. Um, I uh, Jokes are usually over my head. Um, I'm a very straightforward, uh, down-to-business kind of guy, huh. and uh, when I when it comes to coffee, I, I uh, I'm very uh, blunt with it. Um, I don't I don't understand humor of any kind. Hey man, comedy isn't for everyone. It's definitely not for me. Um, I've listened to jokes. Uh, man, I've spent hours listening to jokes, trying to get a laugh or just any kind of joy out of me, and it, it just never seems to happen. Hey man, you'll find your silver laugh someday. Well, they say uh, when, I jo when I started as a barista, I was told that uh, baristas often have no sense of humor. 
So uh, I, I, that's why I felt like I fit in perfectly. Hey man, don't count your beans before they're brewed. Well, I usually count my beans before they're brewed just to make sure that I'm getting the right amount of beans in every cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Has Customs ever given you a problem bringing a handful of beans on the plane? Yeah, definitely. They don't like it when you try to smuggle uh, foods like coffee beans from foreign countries um, because of bacteria and stuff like that. So uh, I usually uh, just shove each bean. Uh, well, I, I individually uh, wrap each bean in cellophane and uh, I shove it up my butt. So I carry about 40 or 50 beans in my rectum each trip. And that's where the fire flavor comes from. It is where the fire flavor comes from. Uh, like I said, I eat a lot of bean and cheese burritos from 7-Eleven, and the grease from that usually provides a bit of spice and tang. Great. Now, I have a question I ask everyone on the program. Are you ready for it? I, I am ready. Would you like to touch mustaches with me? <laughs> um, yes, we, yeah, we can touch mustaches. Okay, here I come. Every week it gets better. It sure as hell doesn't get worse. Uh, it doesn't get worse for me. Um, I feel like things are already as bad as they can get. Um, uh, I, I'm generally unhappy as a barista, and uh, that's why I think I fit in as a barista so well. Now, you worked in stockbroking, correct? Yes, I worked in stockbroking. Um, I was making a lot of money, uh, but I, uh, I, I lost it all to the SEC for insider trading, um, and, uh, and I was promptly fired from my job for getting caught. Uh, they condone stealing, um, but uh, when you get caught, uh, they don't want to hang out with you anymore because they're afraid that uh, you're gonna you're gonna rat on everybody. Have you ever thought about suicide, my guy? I do think about suicide a lot. Um, I think that just comes uh, with the trade of of being a barista. Yeah. Uh, all my barista friends contemplate suicide uh, on a daily basis. Um, if you've ever been to a coffee shop, uh, you know that baristas are generally unkind and unpleasant to deal with. Um, no doubt. It's you. <laughs> it's usually because uh, baristas, um, uh, as part of cafe policy, uh, is to contemplate uh, suicide and uh, do the daily... Um, uh, well, a lot of people do self-affirmations. Uh, uh, we do kind of the opposite. Uh, they're self-deprecations. Um, so before each shift, uh, when you're at work, you look in the mirror and you let yourself know that you're a failure. And uh, this is, you, you wish you did, you made better choices um, and you suck. Uh, and I, I say that to myself every day. And I think it gives the beans the co the, I think it gives the coffee um, a lot of the, the the nutty flavors. It's not just what comes out of your butt. No, it's, it's the defamation. It's the it's the yeah, it's the self defamations and self deprecations. Depre deprecations. Sorry, sometimes I think of words and they jumble in my brain. That's how I generally feel on a daily basis. Um, Speaking of which, we got another sponsor coming your way. Make sure you subscribe for Jungle Brain. It's exactly what you need when you need to wake up in the morning. It gets you big, it gets you strong, it gets you hard. Jungle Brain. <clears throat> My man, anything else you want to say while you are on this program? It's not every day I have a bean man with me. Uh, I, I don't have a whole lot to say. Um, I, as a barista, I'm generally uncreative and uh, I usually just like to tell people um, that uh, you don't really know what it's like to be me. Um, you don't know what it's like to struggle like I do. Um, uh, it doesn't matter where you come from, um, especially if you're from North Korea. Uh, I feel like 
I feel like my problems are uh, a lot bigger than anyone else's. And uh, if you don't, please don't ask me to smile at work. Would never dream of it, bro. That's reserved for you and your lady, okay? If someone comes asking you for a smile, <laughs> you tell them to bunker right off because they are not your girl. Uh, my girl left me years ago. Uh, she said, Bro, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's uh, been generally upsetting. I think about it every day. Um, I wish that, that uh, things could be different. Um, I stalk her and her new boyfriend on Instagram every day, and I send her uh, threatening DMs um, uh, that are also uh, very desperate to get her back. Um, so uh, simultaneously, I'm begging her to take me back and also calling her a bitch. My guy. Well, here's to you and your lady. Here's hoping you get her back. Folks, that's the end of our interview today. Thanks for coming by the studio. And do not forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure you smash the past. I'm Henry, and you're... <laughs>
I went to school. <laughs> I like that. I went to school. <laughs> I went to school. I know what happens there. What did he do? You're going to rub your penis on a butt. That's how your kids dance at the prom. I was at school. I remember how we danced at the prom. A couple of girls would take turns rubbing their butts on my penis. And I would try my hardest not to get aroused, but I always did. You see a lot of yourself in this man. You know, I see a lot of you in myself. I <laughs> 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 you know, I see a lot of myself in you. Because I was just like you once. A boy who hasn't lost his virginity yet to a girl. And my daughter, she's a tramp. She even got a tattoo uh, just above her butt right here. That's why it's called a tramp stamp. Because she's a tramp. <laughs> And I know you're going to see that tattoo and you're going to think, now's my chance. And it probably will be. And all I have to ask you is please wear a condom because my daughter has STDs. You think you're the first guy she's taking to prom? I don't think so. You have like 150 in line. <laughs> In fact, I encourage you to wear two jimmies. You know, I see a lot of myself in you. That's how I know you're going to get chlamydia twice <laughs> in your lifetime. Once now after your first sexual experience and again when you're 35 from a hooker in Dubai. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My, you know, my daughter, you're going to find, you're going to find, <laughs> you know, later you're going to find out something about my daughter. <laughs> you're going to find, you kids are going to go to your motel after the prom. The one that I know you booked, because I see a lot of myself in you. And when I was your age, I booked a, a room at a motel. Just in case, and I see the receipt in your pocket. <laughs> it's right there in your pocket. I can see it. It says motel room. And you're gonna you're gonna take my daughter there. You're gonna she's gonna take her dress off in front of you. You're gonna watch. And you're gonna be aroused too soon. Before when you breath. Probably before you even get into the motel, you're gonna be aroused. Probably, you're going to be aroused when you are at the prom rubbing your penis against her butt when you are dancing. <laughs> you're going to get to this motel. She's going <coughs> to take her dress off. And you're going to find out my daughter has three boobs instead of two. That's because she's a tramp. Only tramps have three boobs. You know... I see a lot of myself in you. That's how I know you're going to be quite amused by the third boob. <laughs> I once had a girl with three breasts. I saw the third one. I said, wow. I wish I had an extra hand. And that's when I called over my buddy Eugene. Because he only has one arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's just enough hands for three boobs. You know, I see a lot of myself in you, and that's why I want you to have a good time at this prom with my daughter. Where at first I was angry about you going to the prom with her, but because I see myself in you, I think I'm okay with it now. So have a good time. Ha <laughs> ha!